and gentlemen, SABC3, in proud association with Speed Stick, brings you Mr. South Africa 2000. Welcome, that's welcome in Afrikaans. I'm in South Africa, specifically at the Afrikaans Stall Monument, to show you today why Tamir Morat is qualified to be the head judge in the Mr. South Africa 2013 journey. 3D model management, my new modeling agency, just signed with him about two weeks ago. Did my new test, bring it to Justin. <laughs> if he opens. Hi Justin, there we go. Today I'm going to be visiting my modeling agency, 3D model management. I just signed with him recently, uh, been in the game for about 10, 12 years, took a bit of a break. Okay, that I just left as a front shot, those are new. And then. Now these are old work, that's new. Yeah, that's old work. Janinia. So I met uh, Justin, the owner of 3D Model Management at a pageant that we were judging at the Winans competition for Mr. SA. And he actually sort of got me back into it. So. From the new events arena in Mainland Park Shopping Centre, Pretoria. Yeah, and Wanda's hair studio. You can see Wanda cutting my hair, she's been cutting my hair for the last, how many years Wanda, 12 years? Yeah. Before I do my test, I gotta go for a haircut. Now I've been coming to the same hairdresser for the last 15 years. It's a girl called Wanda. Um, I don't cut my hair anywhere else. Whenever I need a haircut, this is where I come. It's the best haircuts in fall, best hairstylist in fall as well. I'm on my way to the set of my location for my shoot today. As you can see, it's in the Paul Valley. This is where I love Paul. You can see there's some snow on the mountains. Unbelievable. Okay. You want to hear some dubstep? Now that's fine and dandy. I want to showcase my skills like I'm at the... Shooting with the lovely Kerry from Icon Models and the wonderful Samir Murat from uh -huh. 3D Model Management, right? Yeah. Cool. I I, the last, last I checked. I to get technical, but I know you don't care about that. I bet you're thinking, you progress so fast, but it wasn't. Quality, elusive, indefinable, yet Instinctively recognizable. Good afternoon and welcome to the Bailey Schneider Show. A huge thank you to Josie back again on Monday between 12 and 2 o'clock. So I am surrounded by absolute sexiness today. I love my job. Well, I'm always running late. <laughs> we had to, I had to pick George up and uh, you know, we had to get her, get it. It's about a half an hour drive to get to Bailey Schneider. So I live in Paul, so I got out to really had to push to get to Bailey Schneider in time. And we have one of the judges, and he's got a very sexy name, Thamia Morat. Did I say it correctly? <laughs> yes, you did. There Thanks. we go. So you are a judge of Mr. South Africa. That takes all the pressure off you, or does it? We walked in there with, uh, I think, about 10 seconds before we had to go on air, and actually we made it. Calvin was there before us. Uh, myself and George and Calvin had an interview with her. Um, our interview for the Mr. SA competition. Well, I think it actually puts more pressure on you because you got to choose South Africa's next best thing, which is, well, in, in a, male a male sense. So right. I think the pressure is a bit hectic to choose the next final, well, the next winner of Mr. South Africa. Can I say that, or is it more of a case that you already kind of have an idea as to who you think is going to take the title? Okay. Well, it's what I expected. Um, I'm the head judge of the competition this year, and I expected Bailey to really go for it and ask me questions on what I'm going to be looking for. and what the Mr. SA title is all about and what the ambassador of, Mr. of South Africa, which would obviously be Mr. SA for males in South Africa, should be like. I had this question a couple of times where people would think that the competition would either be rigged or that someone would actually be chosen beforehand after the reality show. Okay. I can say this now that it's not that way. Mm -hmm. There are four guys that really came and stood out from the crowd at the mean, well, through the reality show. I can't mention their names, obviously, obviously yeah. but um, I was wrong about three of them. And it just shows you that the competition is wide open. What do you think about Calvin's performance on during the interview? Should I really answer that on TV? <laughs> For the last five years, I've been actively involved in my call center in Century City. I've got about 150 people working there for me. I partner with my two of my younger brothers. So new, the new CEO of my company, my younger brother. You know when they say you leave things to better people? He's the one that I left it to. 
All I need to know is from you to win. Can we go fetch our Maseratis? <laughs> There's not a lot on the, on the road now. Almost two more. But there's not a lot on there's the road. There's not a lot on the road. There's, oh, a there's few. only a few bad people. <laughs> <laughs> About three months ago I decided that it was time for me to call it quits while well, more of taking a break from actively running the call center and I handed over management to my brother Junaid who's got his psychology degree, very clever guy, he's been with me in the industry for about probably eight, eight to ten years. How's the sales going? It's going okay. Are we behind? I, I'm not getting stats, so I want to see how far behind we are. I with, see uh, your stats as well. My other brother Shukri as well, he's got his honors in marketing. Uh, the two of them will be running the company going forward and running the sales floor. We've got about 15 minutes before the floor starts, so I just want to have a morning, a daily morning meeting. Give me some feedback on what's been happening here this month, please. Sales, Debbie, are we looking? Sales are looking quite good. Today I'm going to be seeing exactly what they're going to be doing and having a meeting with the staff. I try to do it every two or three weeks since I retired just to catch up and see exactly that everything's still running smoothly, seeing that I'm still the big boss. The best Nargile yes. in Cape Town okay. is definitely at Baran, my favorite restaurant. Every day after a long day of work, you'll find me here. I'll come and sit here. I hate traffic, so I never actually sit in traffic when I go home. I'll come and relax here and I'll have a nice bag. To check your durum. I love smoking my Nargile. Istanbul is my favorite city in the whole world. I go there quite often. After a long day of work, I always go to this cafe in Greenpoint Square in Cape Town called Baran's. Uh, it's a real Turkish restaurant. I can have my Iskinder. I can have a nice Nargile. <laughs> At night, I love fighting. As you can see, I like my bag. I like my bags here. I don't like the weight so much. I like to get rid of frustration because you have a long day. And after a long day, it's always really nice to just punch in some bags. It's the best, best medication for anyone. You've got some frustration. Tamir Muerat was a contestant in the Mr. South Africa contest in 2000. He entered when he was 19 years old. He claimed to be too young to enter the contest. And let's see how he did. Mr. South Africa 2000. You were in Mr. South Africa in 2000, man. <laughs> we have some, we got a hold of some clips. Oh, um, but what you did. Yes. <laughs> well, what was going on, man? Well, I was 19 years old when I entered Mr. South Africa. I always say that if they had in the top 12, I probably ended 12 that year. Tamir Murat hails from Paul in the Cape and at 20 years old is tonight's youngest finalist. I always feel that I entered the competition too young. I should have waited a, a few years later, probably at 26, 27, would have been the right time for me to enter. At 19, I was the only guy there who had no experience. I think that I'll be a good role model for all the young, upcoming kids in South Africa who's trying to achieve their goals. I mean, I think I'm a good example of being here, being the youngest contestant ever in Mr. South Africa pageant. So I don't think that I made the most of the competition when I was there because I purely honestly thought that there's no chance I'm going to win at 19. I was there for the exposure and because of the competition, uh, my modeling career sort of boost. Tamir Murat. If I must look back at the Mr. Essay competition, what a journey. <laughs> what, a, what a fun experience. That was all that I could take from it. At 19 years old, 
I wouldn't advise anyone to enter that young. Demir Murat is looking to pursue a career in accounting. <laughs> I met the love of my life about seven or eight years ago. Um, my booker actually introduced us. He told me that he's got the perfect goal for me and at that moment I was definitely not looking to settle or to date anybody. I met Jamie by chance and actually called him the next week and said, listen, why didn't you introduce me to this girl earlier? It's Ra. Jamie and I knew each other for six months and we got married. I think six, seven months after we met, we got married, and seven years later, we've got three kids, and things are amazing. She's a beautiful girl, lovely woman. She's my backbone. Sorry. Going to casting. Yeah, good seeing that I'm, well, I don't even know. I'm meeting with Anna. Seeing that I'm back in the modeling game again after five years. Still don't know why I'm doing this again, but yeah. Let's see. I told my agency when I got back into it is that I really don't need this anymore. I've been sitting at castings. For eight years, since I was 20 or 19 years old, since I started modeling, and I stopped when I was 27 purely because I hate waiting. I'm a really imp impatient person. Yes, I'll come back. See what it looks like in there? No, I don't want to open that. Fuck that. There's like probably 40 people or 50 people sitting in there. And this is one of the reasons why I don't do modeling anymore. I don't have time to sit around and wait for cars. I decided to turn around and I had better things to do with, or more important things to do for the day. So that is what happened at the casting. I didn't do it because I thought it was vain. I did it because I, I don't need it. I don't need to sit at a casting for three or four hours waiting for a job that might pay me 5,000 bucks. It's not going to happen. So not, you're not going to do it? Not going to happen. Really? I, yes, exactly. I told you I don't need this anymore. So. I'm not going to stand at a casting for two or three hours to get a job that might pay me 5,000 bucks. I, I don't need it. Crystal Towers Hotel <laughs> with one of my good friends, Tracy McGregor, having a little bit of a business meeting. Any, a very good business any, meeting. A good business meeting. Any um, advice for the Mr. SF I met, uh, we were at the same agency for about 10 years. I met her when she was 17, when she just started modeling. I was 19. I think you just need to um, be yourself, but um, don't try to be a tough guy. Tough Not guys like don't always win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the only tough guy that needs to be on the show. There we go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I know the Murat, we're synonymous with rugby and we're synonymous with Paul. I come from a club called Vineyards. My great grand well, my grandfather and his brother started the club about 70 years ago. And every Saturday we are a rugby fanatical family. Well, that was good. Enjoy it. That's how it goes every Saturday. Hey, put a knock under my eye. Awesome part of the game. As I grew in my sales career, I decided to write a book called Mama I Sold You, which will actually be a sales autobiography. So it's an autobi autobiography of my life when I fell into my first sale when I was 20 up until 30 years old. Um, in between my sales autobiography would be sales training and different sales techniques, but I'll always tie it into a story about experiences that I had in my life in the last 10 years. I met this Turkish publisher and editor, uh, Vefa Enver. This is a book, Ashka Dunush. Well, this is one of her books. She's got about 12 books in Turkey. Uh, she's actually a novelist. She's not into sales training or sales writing. I met her by chance on Twitter and I decided to speak to her about, you know, when we became friends, to speak to her about actually writing this book with me. She's actually the one that is writing the book for me. I'm doing all the, all the uh, rough work and she's doing the editing and putting it together. Darby and Paul, it's between River Sound and Violet, they're actually our rival clubs in Paul, but seeing that I am from Paul and we love rugby, I always try and give back to the community. Violet's rugby club approached me for some warm-up tops for the day, River Sound did it as well. I did it through one of my companies, the Fish King, seeing that the Fish King is based in Paul. I feel that I've got some unfinished business with Mr. South Africa. I entered when I was 19. I feel that I could be a good Mr. South Africa and that's why I needed to enter this competition for this year. Rudy actually told me that I probably would be one of the strongest contestants if I enter this year and I probably could win this competition but it would be better for me to actually judge this competition and be a mentor for the current or well the Mr. SA 2013. I decided to go home and think about it and I thought that I might as well rather judge this competition. I feel that I have outgrown this competition. Um, the guys who are taking part are sort of just about to peak 
whereas I can't say that I've reached my peak yet, but at 33 and where I am in my life, I don't think that it was right for me to enter Mr. SA this year, and I think I made the right decision to come on board as a head judge and as a mentor to the top 12 finalists and ultimately the winner of this competition. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching the show. On our next episode, we will spend a day with Calvin and Steven, our top 12 contestants from Cape Town. Let's take a look at what will happen on a day with these two guys. Yo, this is, this is where I come from, Strambent and I. And as you can see, this is, this is the closest we sat in. It's quite, it's quite small. Yeah, so basically what the, what the Rasa Challenge Foundation do is we, we come into communities such as this. Welcome to Two Oceans Live Radio to one of the Mr. South Africa 2013 finalists, Kelvin. Welcome to Two Oceans. Thank <laughs> All 12 guys want that fame. We want to be known as Mr. Say. 